So let's try a recipe, shall we? We're gonna do super easy, family-friendly fajitas. So I am going to be using <laughs> frozen peppers and onions, because I can, <laughs> right? I'm gonna be using some different spices, and we're gonna talk about how much of these are gonna go in, but we're gonna use a little cumin powder, a little garlic powder, some smoked paprika. If you hate smoked, you can leave that out and or just use regular paprika. We're going to use Mexican oregano. You could use marjoram or regular oregano. Mexican oregano is more fragrant. It's kind of like in between marjoram and regular oregano. And it just has kind of this lemony floral flavor. So if you have it, use it for sure. Uh, we're also going to use a little bit of jalapeno powder. You can leave that out if you want to, or if you have some wahilo or some ancho chili powder, you could use it. We are also going to use something I call chili for the stew powder, which is like chili seasoning blend. And that could have a lot of different things in it, so it could be hotter or not. It usually has chili peppers, cumin, garlic, and oregano. And the reason I say that versus the other is that this is chili powder, ancho is chili powder, right? So if you have some of those really neat ones, like ancho and wahilo are very mild. They're actually milder than jalapeno. So you could use that and it brings this rich flavor to your fajitas. So what we're gonna do is mix all this together. This is even sheet pan soy curl fajitas. So it's a super easy dish to make. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start adding some of our spices. We're gonna do two teaspoons of Mexican oregano. And remember, these don't have any flavor at this point. If we don't put something really good and flavorful in there, it's gonna be really boring. We're gonna do two teaspoons of smoked paprika. And actually, I go a little heavy because I love smoky flavors. If you love smoky flavors and you don't have smoked paprika, you might be able to use some liquid smoke if you have it. Now, this is our magic chicken dust. <laughs> Basically, it makes things taste like chicken and cheese. It's nutritional yeast. I'm gonna put one extra one in there. It called for two, but I'm gonna be crazy. We're gonna do um, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and this is granulated garlic. And in case you're wondering, garlic powder isn't something weird. <laughs> it's actually garlic that's been dried and ground up. So it's a perfectly natural ingredient. We can use one teaspoon of salt or you can use a salt substitute if you're on a salt-free diet. And also, if you think that's a little much, you could use less. Remember, we're adding in a lot of peppers with this too, so the salt kind of goes for the whole part of the dish. Now we're gonna do half a teaspoon of cumin, which is just really that kind of dark, nummy flavor that we get in Indian foods and in a lot of Mexican foods and it kind of gives it a meatier flavor. I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of jalapeno powder. What I like about jalapeno powder is that it adds kind of this greener, wonderful aroma. All right, and then we're going to put chili for the stew powder in, which is whatever blend you usually use for your chilies. And this one's from Trader Joe's, so it's easy to get and accessible. All right, so now we're just gonna toss this, and what I want you to see is all that's gonna stick some to that wet chicken. And by chicken, I mean soy curls, <laughs> our faux chicken. And remember, most of this red powder is paprika, so it looks a little spicier than it is. Okay, so you wanna get this kind of mixed up nice. And the same thing, if I was putting a coating on here like I was talking about for the air fried soy curls, it's gonna stick some. You could also use a batter as well. So you could do these like, you could take them, put them in a little flour, 
then put them in a batter and then finish them off with a little flour or breadcrumbs or something like that. There's so many ways that you can use this. Okay, I feel like that's pretty good and mixed up. I'm opening my bag of frozen veggies. And we'll see if I use the whole bag or not. Cheryl, <laughs> my wife actually picks out all of the veggies and things like this. So yeah, I think we can use we can use the whole bag in here. I'll eat them all. Okay, and I'm just trying to get some of that seasoning to kind of come off on there too, just to get it a little more mixed up uniformly. Now that that's all mixed up, I've got the oven preheating at 400 degrees. You can also do this in your air fryer. If you have a Breville or a toaster oven air fryer combo, you can do that. Um, just realize some of the juices as these peppers and onions cook are going to drip. So if mine over here, I have a drip pan in the bottom. If you have the Breville, it's going to go on those covered heating elements. So I wouldn't recommend that, but if you're using a basket one, that'd be great too. So basically I'm just going to spread this over. <laughs> and this makes about enough for four people. So if you're a larger family, you could put this on two sheets for sure and double the recipe. All you'd use is a whole package of soy curls and two frozen onions and peppers. And you can use fresh onions and peppers too. Don't let me stop you. Um, that's my oven getting ready right now. It's saying, hello, feed me some fajitas. Okay, so let's put it this way. You guys can see it a little bit. And, you know, in, just like in your air fryer and your oven, we want to make things, you know, as single layer as possible without being super crazy about it. Sometimes I get a little super crazy, so it's okay if you do. Okay, so see how we're just moving these around. And I don't care if some of this gets off the paper. I put it on the paper because I did not want to put any oil with this. If you wanted to, you could oil your baking sheet or you could toss everything in a little bit of oil if you use oil. That's totally up to you. We avoid it around here in most things. We use it for treats. And so what we're going to do, see, I, see how I've got a little extra room. I could, you just don't want everything bunched up in the middle. So the keys we're going to be looking for is for the vegetables to be cooked, but still crispy, and these to be a little darker and drier. That's going to give it a nice chewy consistency. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the oven for about five minutes, five to 10 minutes. If you're in the air fryer, definitely do five. If you're in an oven, five to 10 minutes, then we're going to pull it back out, shake it around, see how things are going. Okay. I'll see you back in a second. Okay. So we've got our wonderful things out for the first time. I let these go for about 10 minutes because sometimes my veggies are a little less frozen than they were. I just took them out of the freezer. Okay, and I've got the fan on. So you can see these are a little bit drier, like maybe just a little bit. So it just depends on how crispy you want them. Like I feel like the peppers seem pretty good to me. So if you were gonna make this maybe as a meal prep and heat it up again later, I might stop here. But if you wanna eat it tonight, I think it would be nice to have it cook just a little more and get a little more of a crispness edge, kind of like that one has on the rest of the soy curl. So I'm just mixing this around a little bit. And I don't care if I go off the parchment, I can wash this pan. It just makes it still a lot easier to clean up, you know, a half an inch of it than the whole pan. That's why I'm doing it. So I'm just mixing this around. So the stuff that maybe seems a little wetter. I might pull out to the edges a little bit more, but you don't have to be that strategic. It's just dinner. It's just a sheet pan dinner. 
and I'm saying that to myself as I want to like make some sort of crazy pattern with my soy curls. So if you're if you're feeling that way too, I'm with you. So don't worry. All right. So we're going to put this back in the oven for about another 10 minutes. So this is actually five minutes later, not 10. So I wanted to check on them and I think five extra minutes. So we did, I did 10 minutes in the beginning, five minutes later on. Sometimes you might do five minutes in the beginning, 10 minutes later on. But to me that looks, a, it makes it a little chewier when they're just a little bit crisper. If I went five more minutes, they're going to be a little too crisp, I think. And if you're doing this in your air fryer, again, do it in five minute increments because I find that that's the best way to learn how it should work. So now this, is, hey, it smells really good. You can taste this now and like we could still sprinkle some extra salt or other things, but like I'm looking at this so we could serve it over salad. We could serve it over grain, make like a, a chipotle bowl that's better than a chipotle bowl and costs a lot less. Um, we could put it in a burrito. We could put that burrito in the air fryer and make a chimichanga. We could put it in tacos. We could put this on top of um, a tofu scramble and make kind of like ranchero style. We could do just about anything and honestly you could just eat it like this too if you wanted to. But I think it, it's more fun if you have some other things. So what I like to do is have this in a bowl and then have all the accoutrements around. So maybe have brown rice or quinoa. Um, you could have some black beans, even just a can of black beans you heat it up. These could all be things that they could play with. Um, lettuce, chopped onions, chopped cilantro, um, more fresh vegetables, salsas, a vegan sour cream, vegan cheese, whatever is on your menu for the evening can be there and you could have the taco shells either soft or hard and there you go. It's an amazing dinner. 